Uh, good morning. My name is Claire Kaufman. I am a set decorator in Los Angeles, California. Um, my first question for you is growing up, what did you want to be? Wow. Um, so I grew up in Del Mar, California. I, um, you know, I rode horses and I ice skated and, you know, but I was always really drawn to the arts. Um, I was always doodling, always looking at books, picture books. Um, and so when I got into high school, I got really interested and started doing a lot of artwork. Um, I can't tell you I was a great artist, but I really enjoyed it. Um, and started sort of going down the path of graphic arts. But um, honestly, I came to LA for a summer and, you know, as, as luck would have it, ended up on a music video. And that was the end of that. I definitely had found where I wanted to be. I read that your creatively inclined mother gave you early exposure to aesthetics. Can you tell me a bit more about how she helped inspire you? Um, you know, my mom had, uh, we, she just always had a beautifully curated house. Um, you know, I was definitely, there was a couple of rooms I was not allowed to go into as a, as a child. Um, <laughs> but you know, she really, uh, she had collected just a beautiful, um, array of antiques and oil paintings and was very eclectic in her decoration and was always sort of like redoing guest bedrooms and, you know, doing stuff around the house. And I think that was definitely, um, something that sort of inspired me and, you know, uh, and appreciated her aesthetic, I guess. Yeah, that's really great. Um, are there any specific set decorations from certain movies or television that you can remember as a kid that maybe inspired you or you look back on really really like using to help your work now um I mean I have to be honest I I, I didn't really this was not on my radar growing up you know yeah. it was not I didn't even really think about people doing this as a living uh, it was really when I came to LA and, you know, I, of course I always enjoyed movies and, and, um, but, you know, as, as I started to do it, I really started to think about the films that I had seen growing up, um, films like the red shoes and Gigi. And, you know, then it was things like, um, Blade Runner and just, you know, really starting to look at how people had created these worlds and and decorated these movies that I think I really started to appreciate um and then and then really wanted to do it <laughs> yeah <laughs> how is that transition for you from music videos to to working in film and television what was that like for you you know, I um I'm I'm so happy that I sort of came out of the music video world. It was honestly back when I got started, it was so creative and they spent lots of money and we did giant builds and so um it you know, it really sort of set me up for for thinking about how to do things in scope. Um, and then I sort of segued out of music videos into commercials and honestly did commercials for about 10 years straight. Um, you know, <clears throat> it was interesting back then because you were definitely um, sort of pigeonholed as a decorator, like you were a commercial decorator or you were a TV decorator or you were a feature decorator. And uh, I remember thinking like, well, I can read a script. <laughs> I can break down a script. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a decorator. I can decorate anything. So I really, um, really strive to sort of uh, make that transition and and be open to doing anything and, and letting people know that I could do anything. It's okay. definitely changed now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what would you say is the, the biggest challenge of your job versus the biggest reward for you? You know, um, there's always the budget. It's, yeah. uh, you know, I, I call people that hit, sometimes they have the magic pencil, you know, you can uh, sort of draw or design anything, but having, uh, you know, the, the, the budget to be able to make these things come to life um, is a very important part of my job. And um, being able to sort of you know, and I think it's something that's definitely come easier as I've done it for years and years. Like you just kind of know, like I know a living room that's high end is going to cost this, and I, you know, know a whatever. So it's it's a lot easier now. Um, 
but it's just, you know, one of, one of those unfortunate things I still have to deal with. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I love the camaraderie of the crew. I love, you know, but, uh, you know, sometimes you feel like social services. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, on, and generally they're all fantastic. I read that you said after breaking down the script, you begin every project by creating a wall that visually describes the arc of the project. Can you tell me more about this? I'm curious about your process. So, you know, as I read a script, I really can sort of start already start envisioning what I think these um, sets should look like. So it's really sort of digging in and doing research and you know it just really depends on the project you know Oppenheimer was such a you know such a uh, different project than I had sort of done before based in history and there was so much to sort of look at but then sometimes you're just sort of creating you know you do something like Little Women and sure there's research for the time but you want to sort of especially with that movie we sort of wanted to put our own spin on that particular version of it. Um, so it's just really sort of digging in. Um, you know, I look at books and I go through magazines and of course I use the internet and it's just printing out images and I really just start collecting and making this sort of giant mood board. And what I found is, um, you know, I have the space to do it. What's really amazing is to sort of do the film from beginning to end. And then, you know, especially on a film um, on like white noise, which was so much about color and, uh, you know, how we were going to use color to tell a story for each set. Um, it was really amazing to sort of put it all up on the wall and, and be able to stand back and then have Noah come in and sort of walk through each room and talk about where we wanted it to go. So uh, research, honestly, and prep is really part of my favorite part of my job. So what's it like seeing your ideas like your work in your mind versus on the stage versus on the big screen after everything's done? Uh, you know, I, a part of why I love my job, I love to walk into this empty space uh, that, you know, maybe the art department has built or location and making it come alive and making people believe they are really in this space and in this time, um, you know, it's always honestly a little nerve wracking to see it up on the screen. <laughs> Yeah, an IMAX. <laughs> so uh, I, it always takes me at least two sittings to be able to sit down. The second time, I can usually enjoy watching the film. You know, the first time you're always uh, looking for any boo boos. <laughs> <laughs> How does being a set decorator impact the way you view media? Because obviously, watching your own stuff, you said watching the first time you're looking for for stuff. But how does it impact the way you you watch any any television, any movies? You know, it's funny because I've had this conversation with um, various people who, you know, work in wardrobe and I, I've come to the realization that everybody sort of watches it very differently. Um, you know, I definitely watch it uh, for the decoration and look at things and, you know, like, oh, I know where that piece came from, what prop house that came from. But, you know, it's, you know, I know I'm always watching something good, actually, when the sort of it just sort of disappears into the background and I'm not thinking about it, um, you know? So it's, it works both ways, you know? Sometimes things are supposed to be in your face about the art direction and the set decoration. And sometimes they're really just supposed to fall away. This is sort of a harder question because a lot of people have a really difficult time describing themselves. But if you could describe yourself as a set decorator, how would you describe yourself? Ooh. Um, I'd say very organized. Um, I definitely feel like my first instinct is my best instinct. And I like, I pride myself on the fact that I'm able to make decisions and follow through with them, I guess would be um, sort of things that people have told me in the past and things that I sort of appreciate hearing, so. What in your mind makes a good set decoration? Like when you're watching something, what really sets you off for that? You know, I think it's um, about telling a story. I think it's um, having it feel believable. Um, you know, it obviously depends on the set, but I think um, going into somebody's home, you really want to have them tell a story. And who are these people? You know, I really sort of think about like, 
what have they collected? You know, on White Noise, we really talked about that house was a vessel for all these people's lives. So it was so important to me that it didn't just look 80s in your face, 80s. You know, they'd had that house, you know, Jack had been living in the house for 20 years. So there was stuff. So I think it's just about, um, you know, the SDSA said that you're like the visual storyteller for the character in the script. And I think that's just such a great way to explain my job. Do you, is there a dream job or a person that you really want to work with in the future? <laughs> um, you know, I honestly, uh, I, I absolutely love doing film because I love to tell that story. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I enjoy lots of things, but definitely love doing films. Um, I feel like I have a lot more films in me. Yeah. Um, I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm open to it all. I'm open to doing contemporary, you know, uh, again, never wanting to, you know, it was funny because I'd never really done anything period. And then it was just like, I did period film, period film, period film. So, uh, you know, but I'm, I'm open to anything, you know, James Bond movie. I don't know. It would be, uh, I got, I'm, uh, I'm ready for anything at this point. Do you have any favorite memories that stick out to you from certain projects? I mean, obviously we'll, we'll go into your work in a bit here, but do you have any favorite memories that stick out to you? Um, you know, it's, I, I, there's nothing comes to mind as one specific thing, but, uh, you know, it's, whether you're in the middle of the desert at 5 a.m. in the morning and the sun's coming over the hill or, you know, you're standing in a set and, you know, you sort of step back and just kind of take it all in. It's, um, you know, there's lots of times where it's it's you've, it's really a great feeling. And you said you, you said you wanted to work more. You wanted to do some more films in the future. What's it like doing the set decoration for a movie versus television? Something I'm curious about. So, you know, the movie, you have one script um, and you're really, you know, you're able to break that script down and you're being able to work the schedule, but you kind of know what's coming. Um, I would say episodic television is probably the hardest thing I do. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, cross boarding and shooting out of sequence and working on multiple scripts at a time. Um, so it's it's very challenging and you know you're usually trying to complete something in an eight day schedule so um it's just you know it moves at such a fast pace um it's it's interesting because i really um i appreciate doing it but it is very um you don't have the time and i think that's probably why i prefer to do films um but i like the challenge for sure <laughs> <laughs> if you could give any advice to upcoming people who, who want to enter the, the industry for set decoration, what would you say? Uh, I think it's important to have a well-rounded knowledge of lots of different uh, styles and lots of different time periods. Uh, you know, I'm. it's really interesting to see where the industry is going right now and, and how much, you know, AI and, you know, computers and all these things are going to play coming up. So, but the reality is that someone is still going to need to decorate the set. And I think it almost becomes more important to be able to have this dialogue and, and knowledge about furniture styles and periods and things. So uh, I, I don't have any great advice. I just, um, my best advice to anyone is sort of just jump in with both feet. Um, I think yeah. it is a job that you are best served just sort of hitting the ground and doing um, you know, I'm a very tactile person, a very visual person. So I really just love to go out and walk the aisles of prop houses. So it'll be interesting to see where that goes. I think that's a perfect transition to move into more of your work here. I wish I could cover everything you've done because you've done so much. <laughs> However, we definitely don't have time for that. Um, <laughs> But I'm going to start with Little Woman, which I, I absolutely love. I have the book up here on my shelf. Aww. But um, I read that you said that you visited museums to examine table settings, drapery, fabrics. And uh, I'm pretty sure you visited the um, Alcott's Orchard House and also had your team tour homes in the area. How did this help you in your process of bringing your vision to life? Uh, so obviously, because 
it was such a long time ago. I, I just took in all the history that I could get. Um, you know, it was really amazing. We, um, we toured this one house, uh, which is basically where the Civil War had started. Yeah. And the wallpaper in this house was so fantastic. I mean, it was so contemporary in a way. It just, it completely blew my mind. So, you know, when we sat down with Greta and really started talking about what we wanted this film to be, you know, just said, I don't want it to be a documentary. We we want to do our version of Little Women. So, uh, you know, as, as much as I sort of took in all the history, I really tried to push the envelope and, you know, and seeing these things and going to these historic museums and, you know, it was so interesting seeing the fabrics and the wallpapers and all these things. So I think that's why we sort of sort of pushed pushed the boundaries with that film a little bit because in in reality it wasn't really wasn't that far off for yeah. for all some of it, you know. Um, and you know it's so challenging doing a film like that because finding period correct stuff. But you know we manufactured a lot of stuff. Um, you know, we built all the those school desks in the school room and, you know, finding things in multiples, obviously, is is challenging. So um, but I, I I have such a such a little soft place in my heart for that film, because, you know, I grew up reading Little Women and yeah. had seen the, the, the movies. And um, so it was uh, it was so wonderful to be able to put your own your own spin on it. Kind of heading more into what you just said about working on a period piece. What's it like working on a period piece? Do you enjoy it any more or less than working on something set in more modern times? Um, I can't say I enjoy it more. It just, it has its own different set of challenges. Um, you know, something like uh, White Noise, the shopping for that, where we were in Cleveland was amazing. You know, it was like... <laughs> No offense, Cleveland, but it's like an an eighties an eighties wonderland. So, um, you know, but you know, I might walk into an antique mall and scour, you know, endless amounts of aisles and walk out with two things that I think are correct for the film. Um, but doing contemporary, you know, it's again sort of love to push the envelope all the time. So, what is that, and where is it going? I read where you said that your designer. Um, Jess said that you want people to walk out of the theater wanting to live in the March house. And as somebody who definitely left the theater feeling this way, can you tell me a bit more about how you brought this magical house to life? <laughs> um, you know, it was, we really, I, I loved those girls and I think each of them had such a special quality, you know, with the music and the drawing and all of it, you know? So um, I really tried to get that, creative wonderful uh you know vision that each of them had into the house um so it was just uh really just trying to make it sort of you know creative i guess and and feel special and that each one of them had a place in the house that you know was a part of them i love doing the girls bedrooms <laughs> <laughs> Well, tell me a bit about working on the bedrooms. What was that like for you? Um, we, you know, it was fun. Uh, Jess really got into the idea of um, that Amy had painted all these things all over and on the door, back of the doors and on the window seals. And uh, it was really fun to sort of come up with like, what would those things be? And, and, you know, what, what did she, uh, you know, what, what did she like? And um, so, you know, and then we would sort of had these pieces of furniture and like the girl, what would the girls do? You know, would they tear pages out of books and do decoupage on things? So it was kind of trying to get into the mind of them and, and what they would have been doing in that house, you know, especially through all the winter months and all these sorts of things. And uh, so it was fun. With Going back to what you said about the different girls' spaces and sort of that, um, you said that you wanted Joe's area of the attic to feel like a nest where she could be her most creative self and sit with her thoughts. Can you tell me a bit more about creating the attic space, Joe's area, any of the girls' spaces? Yeah, um, you know, there's a there's a picture of uh, of Joe sitting on her little settee sofa. And it was, uh, and and we knew that Greta wanted to do a shot in that window, so it was really 
like what did Joe have up there and what made her comfortable and what made her feel creative? Um, you know, and it was again just what would what would really be up there? And so going back to this idea where, you know, the marches had sort of gotten furniture from the aunt and they, you know, had leftover stuff and people had given them stuff. So um, I remember a friend of mine was like, wow, there were so many furniture styles in that movie. And I was like, yeah, because that's, we were in, you know, we were in Europe and we were here and, you know, they had gotten all this stuff from various people. So um, it was important for me to get that across, but just, you know, really wanted Joe's space to feel like something special and, and a place she could sort of disappear with her thoughts. So I hope that came across. <laughs> it definitely did. Um, I want to ask you in detail more about different spaces and, and some moments in the movie. Firstly, a moment that really stuck out to me was the set decoration for the play sequence that the girls put on. And that I specifically wanted to ask you about that because I, I've heard you talk about like thinking about what the girls would have and what they would what they would use creatively and I and I'm just very interested to hear more about that. Uh, so Jess and I had talked a lot about what what they would have and uh, honestly just one day I was sitting in my office and he walked in with this giant branch. <laughs> said, I know how we're going to decorate the play. And so we really spoofed off this thing of, you know, um, bringing in nature and this would be the things that they would have and sort of decorating these trees and, um, you know, the curtains were leftover quilts from their beds. Uh, and I, and I love, you know, and, and I love when you work on a film and where the, you know, everything comes together and it's like the costumes work, the hair and makeup works, the set decorate, you know, all of it is working together. And I think that really uh, comes across in that play, in that play sequence, because it, it does feel magical. It does. It's for everything in the movie is so cohesive. It all really just melds together. Yeah, um, no, and we had such an amazing team. I mean, right down to the food stylist, you know, she was phenomenal. So it's it's so great when it does all come together yeah know it you can feel it yes it's a feeling <laughs> when you watch it um comparing the different houses aside from the main march house because that one just has a whole other feeling like i was mentioning than all the other houses this very warm feeling but then of course you have you have Aunt march's house Lori's house what were these other houses like for you to work on uh so obviously Lori's house, I wanted to feel very austere and I wanted him to feel, you know, a longing to want to be in that March house because it was so warm. Um, you know, it wasn't, you know, it was like, what, what, what did he have? He had his books and his teacher and his, so it was really more about the academics and everything having its place where, you know, the March house is kind of all over the place. I wanted everything to feel like every book on the shelf was sort of lined up and it was just a a much more austere place um and then aunt march's house i tried I tried to make her a little fun we you know we looked at a lot of different wallpapers and we came up with this sort of purple purple and rose palette um so it's you know the challenges are you find these amazing sofas and you know pieces but we had to recover everything mm -hmm. and the drapery you know we made all the drapery in every room which I love drapery so that movie was <laughs> right up my alley so and has this amazing draper so um you know it's again finding the the color palettes and the, the right look for the room and and who these people are that's again trying to get that all across yeah and another space that sticks out to me is is amy's art studio that's when the in the flash forwards and in the movie what was that space like for you that's just a beautiful space uh so we had looked at a lot of places and the idea was that she sort of maybe shared that space with multiple people. So it wasn't necessarily her space. Uh, you know, it was really, it was like a boiler room in this, on the property of this mansion, but it was completely empty. Um, but, you know, I just, again, tried to bring in all these textures and layers. Um, you know, I had a, a buyer who knew an, an artist who worked out of Boston who just really still painted in the old, 
you know, proper, like, you know, the canvases were nailed on. And so he, he was such a, a treasure trove of stuff that we were able to, to acquire. Um, but, you know, it was layering the rugs and then kind of doing these little vignettes where people might have painted a, a still life, you know, like I worked with a florist and had a big floral arrangement done and someone was working on a painting to match the floral arrangement. Um, but, you know, it was a really a big, empty, cavernous space. So kind of and I and I knew we'd see 360 in there. So it was sort of taking the space and creating these little pieces and vignettes within that big space um but it is it is one of my favorite sets in the movie it's so beautiful <laughs> um a way in which the the different sets change is of course you have the flash forwards in time and, and the flashbacks like you see the attic sort of change since they've, they've grown older and things have changed what was what were the flashbacks versus like changing the different spaces depending on what time it what what was that like for you uh, you know, it's just, again, I, it's either taking away or adding it's, um, you know, like, a, a, you know, I, I wanted the attic to feel a little sad when everything was out of there. So it was really just maybe taking a few key pieces that really would have struck with people, like knowing that that would have belonged to one of them and having them in there. Um, Again, it is it is such a partnership because it's the way things are lit and the way things are shot. It really it makes such a big difference. You know, I'm really at the mercy of of lighting in the DP because they can I can decorate the most beautiful set in the world, but if it's not lit and shot well, it just doesn't look good. So um, so grateful to have them give so much sort of atmosphere and beautiful lighting to those sets. And I think that really helps tell the story as well. I could think of so many sets from this movie, the publishing house where they make the dresses, but um, do you have any other favorite spaces that you really enjoyed working on or that stick out to you from your time on this movie? I actually really enjoyed doing the publisher's house. There was, you know, it was such a, cause it was really this man's world and, you know, all yeah. these men smoking cigars. And um, so it was, it was fun to sort of go from the March house and then do something like the publisher's house. Um, we, found all these sort of old um, newspaper clippings and things that we taped up and really, again, with the the green palette in there and the atmosphere, um, you know, again, it was it's so interesting because even in my research, when I looked back, it was like, uh, none of the furniture matched. It wasn't <laughs> like this was an office full of desks, you know, so it was, uh, it was fun, but you know, cause it could not look great, <laughs> a bunch of mismatched stuff. So it was sort of finding the right balance of, you know, guest chairs and and their chairs. And um, again, always trying to find multiples on period stuff is definitely a big challenge, but uh, that, that was fun because we sort of got to do, a you know, a, a bit of everything in there. You mentioned a little bit about this, but what was it like working with with Greta? I'm very, I've heard so many things um, and I and I read where you said a bit about how good that experience was, but what else was that like for you? Uh, she's honestly one of the sweetest people I could ever imagine working with. But on the other side of that, she has such a plan and such a direction and she is so prepared and she's really done her homework. So it really helps. And, and the other great thing about her, and especially on that movie, she was so collaborative with Jess and I, and she was so appreciative of, you know, we, we had some money, but it wasn't a giant budget movie. So it yeah. was sort of, you know, um, to do a movie of that scale with so many moving sets, um, she was so appreciative of what what we were able to do for her. But she was so collaborative and and lovely. I, I, I really hope I work with her again. Do you have any funny stories that stick out to you from your time working on the movie? Um, I remember being very cold and knowing why we don't use kerosene lamps anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I remember um, I never want to see a candle or a kerosene lamp for the rest of my life because uh, they don't work very well and they go out a lot. <laughs> my poor on set dresser was just, he never wants to see them either. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Um, I'm going to ask you a few white noise questions before I move on to Oppenheimer. But um, what was this movie like for you? Of course, there's such, um, just looking at the set and watching it, there's such strong color choices throughout this movie. And I'm just, I'm wondering what that was like for you. Uh, you know, that was 
a really interesting project. So I read when Jess called and said, you know, we're we're going to go do this movie. Of course, ran out and got the book. And the book is a monster. <laughs> um, uh, so, you know, Jess really, I love this idea that he came up with the idea of the Rubik's Cube. And that sort of each room and each space uh, was based on the Rubik Cube the, uh, colors. Um, but then when you get to something like the supermarket, I loved this idea of, you know, every gondola is sort of four foot wide. So we just did these big swaths of color. Yeah. And I will tell you the, the best compliment, again, because Greta was there, of course. Um, Greta walked in and she said, I feel like I'm in an Andy Warhol painting. And I was like, that is hands down the best compliment you ever could have given me. <laughs> so it was a, uh, it was it was a really challenging movie, but um, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. You know, the supermarket really did sort of become its own piece of artwork in a way. Yeah, just looking looking at photos of that and watching, it's so, everything's so, prist it's so crazy to look at. Um, yeah, we had talked about, you know, um, was it like that and just sort of went through an aisle one time and started taking stuff out and pushing things back. And I was like, no, it's got to be like this magic world, you know, it's sort of this utopia that everybody goes to. So we ended up on the, uh, there's somebody in every aisle pushing cans forward. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any other favorite spaces that you really enjoyed working on? Of course, you have the house and, and the hospital, but are there, were there any other specific rooms that you really liked working on? Um, you know, it was funny to do another attic. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was, you know, cause the attic and, and the garage were actually both built on a uh, stage. Uh, mm -hmm. The whole house was done on the stage, um, all the interiors. Uh, but you know, then it was something like that crazy cafeteria and sort of, you know, again, like what would it be? And it's the eighties and it's new. And, um, it was, a. Uh, it was fun. It was fun. I, uh, and I loved the hospital because just that space we were in was incredible. It was an old church, rundown wow. church. Wow. And when Jess got in there, all the walls had been covered in this sort of white vinyl. And as he pulled all this vinyl away, just this amazing frescas and, you know, so it's, those are always fun things when you sort of dig into a location and then something magical happens. It was, it was very cool. Of course, working on we talked about the period piece of Little Women and, and when that, and this and this is the 80s, but what was that like for you? Like, what parts of that, what, what did you enjoy about that? About the 80s? Yeah. Well, I grew up in the 80s, <laughs> <laughs> so I knew a lot about it. Um, again, it was just sort of finding the real deal and finding, you know, researching all the old products and then manufacturing them. And, you know, we manufactured something like 5,000 chip bags. And wow. my, my buyer found these, um, these sort of Japanese sodas because they still had like pull tops and the right size. And then we, you know, obviously labeled them all. So it was just uh, sort of reliving my childhood in a weird way. <laughs> so it was very fun. What was it like to see it come to life for the first time, like watching it for the first time? I I really appreciated uh, how well the color trans translated in the film. I think uh, I, uh, I felt like there was so much going on all the time. <laughs> it really never, you know, you were always looking to see something in each set. So it was very, very different than watching uh, Little Women for the first time. Yeah. Um, do you have any favorite memories that stick out to you from like funny stories that stick out to you from working on that movie? <laughs> um, funny, I'm not sure, but I, I will say doing the, um, the uh, evacuation out on the highway with all the period cars and dressing them and then that whole sequence, um, that was really something. I mean, I I don't I couldn't believe how many period cars I was looking at in real time, and you know we, you know it was. But again, even like the the college drive in and even that evacuation, everything was curated for a reason. Like luggage was matched to a certain car color, so it was really a lot of thought that went into to all of it. So, but that was amazing. <laughs> I'm I think cold again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> I think that's a perfect transition into Oppenheimer, which I'm super excited to talk to you about. Um, I read, I read where you said that Ruth called you saying that they decided to make a creative change and wanted to know if you were interested in coming on board. Can you tell me what it was like coming to work on this movie late? <laughs> so obviously I was thrilled and super excited. Um, she called, I went to Universal, I read the script and I was like, wow, <laughs> <laughs> I must be a little crazy to do this, but I can't turn this down. So, you know, again, I just jumped in with both feet and uh, it was, it was a lot. Um, but it was really, again, going back to being organized and thinking about the shooting schedule. Um, basically, the first thing I did is I hopped on a plane and, and went to New Mexico and sat down with her and sort of got up to speed. And the first uh, big set that I had to do was the the Trinity, the tower. And um, it was just uh, breathtaking, you know, and it was logistically really difficult because you know you would drive from Santa Fe and then finally when you get to the location you'd have to drive like another 30 minutes down a dirt road yeah. um, and it would the wind would pick up and the rain would come and tents were blowing and <laughs> um but you know again standing out there and just looking at the vastness of it was incredible and so you know even that was a set it was very spread out because the tower was here the bunker was here and then all the tent village was sort of over here um so but i i i instantly knew i was on something very special um of course thrilled to work with christopher nolan yeah. um and uh yeah it was it was great i don't i don't remember doing it hardly because <laughs> i was just running <laughs> I read that this is your first historical film. What was that like for you? Uh, it, it was, it was good. It was, you know, you, it was again, a very different process because um, it was my first historical film and Ruth and the researcher Lauren had really curated this am amazing, a very similar way to that I had worked and do work, um, had curated this amazing walls all over the walls at Universal in the offices. Um, Lauren had just researched incredible images for each set. Um, and then, so it was not only getting that that correct, but it was also thinking about things that are going to be shot in color and the things that were going to be shot in black and white. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I basically work off, I have a process where I have a folder for each set and then, you know, it'd be the name of the set, it'd be the year, it'd be whether it was being shot in black and white. Um, if it was being shot in black and white, I would take all the, the set dressing that we would shop and then I would convert it into black and white and show it to Ruth as it, I thought it would look in the film. Um, so it was fun. It was, it was a lot. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to ask you is about the black and white. So, so you did know it was going to be in black. How else did that affect your work? Um, it doesn't really change my work too much. You definitely think about, um, the colors. And I think having things like the iPhone is, you know, amazing because you can take these things and switch them into black and white and then, and really know what they're going to look like. Um, you know, but then it was interesting. There was the Washington ballroom and yeah. it was shot black and white and color. So, uh, it's just thinking about, um, you know, textures almost more for me than colors. Yeah. Uh, but you know, um, yeah, it was, it was, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so many of the spaces we see through Oppenheimer are wide open white wall spaces, which is different than what I've seen with, with other work you've done, such as Little Woman or stuff like that, that had a very like warm and like full feel to it. What, what was that like for you? I, um, I had done another interview and I had, I said, um, I cannot tell you how refreshing it is to, uh, you know, after a career of saying, I can't possibly shoot this white wall, yeah. um, able to shoot white walls because that's what they would have been. And, you know, Ruth and I talked a lot about um, that the rooms were very stark and there wasn't a lot of stuff on the walls and it was just the right pieces and the right stuff on the walls. Uh, I, uh, again, it was just sort of curating these spaces in a very different way, but, just trying to find the right things. Um, but the the white walls were very refreshing. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, before I ask you about some specific spaces, because there's a lot that stand out, you said that there were some happy accidents that happened during the production of the film just because of, like, you came on, on board late. Do you have any examples? Um, you know, it really comes down to uh, upholstery because, uh, you know, we have great amazing prop houses in Los Angeles, but you know, some of the upholstery looks like it's from 1930. Um, so, you know, maybe not finding it maybe wasn't exactly the way I would have done the film because again, I, we, we did manufacture all the drapery for the film, but I didn't have a lot of time to do a lot of upholstery stuff. So sometimes, you know, it was like, all right, we're going with this and, uh, and being really happy with the way it ended up looking on the film. So. Yeah. Starting with the Rad Lab and the and the classroom, can you can you talk to me about these spaces, which are brilliantly done, by the way? Thank you. Um, the The Rad Lab was the first big set I did back in LA after we finished in New Mexico, and then I sort of prepped, helped prep New York. Uh, you know, it was like part of what I love about my job is just like I have to become an instant, um, you know, professional about a lot of different things very quickly. Um, so it was just really sort of working again with the research and, and talking about the equipment that was in there. You know, we weren't walking out and just pulling these things off the shelf. So it was really sending people out, finding the right dials, finding the right buttons, you know, building the right uh, pieces and scaling them out the right way. You know, there's that incredible board on the back wall and, and what those little pieces were gonna be and how they were gonna read. Um, and again, it was, you know, it was fun because that was a set where I really felt like things could look used and could look patinaed and, um, and again, it was just sort of this big empty space. And then it was all about, you know, Chris's actions and where they were going to be. And, um, and you always, I always tried to make sure that every room he could 360, no matter what, so that there was always interesting layers and textures on every wall. Um, and again, you know, it's like all the cloth wiring and how the lights are hung. And uh, so that was, that was a really great set to do. And then the classroom, you know, it was so interesting because he sort of takes it on and it's like this storage room, yeah. it's this progression um, of what those pieces were going to be. And, uh, you know, a, a happy accident, that piano that's in there. Yeah. That, in that room, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, um, for many reasons, mostly my lead man's back, we, uh, we opted to keep it in there because it was a storage room and they were just maybe pieces that had been kicking around. So it's, uh, it's interesting, but again, you know, we change every light switch. We change every light. We changed every cord on every lamp to be cloth wiring so that they were all period correct. So there's a lot that goes into it that I don't even know if you necessarily see specifically, but it's all for me in the de those details that I think those make those sets come alive. Yeah. You, you said the first thing you worked on was the Trinity Tower. That's, that's, an, that's an insane first thing to work on. What, what was that like? Um, you know, it was a lot because, uh, you know, the, we had to get that tent that goes over the bomb into production immediately. Uh, and we, we talked a lot about what that was and what that fabric was. And I had seen some reference photos of the real Oppenheimer in that tent. And there were sort of these beautiful shadows that play on the fabric. So it was really important, but, you know, I, <clears throat> thank God for Warner Brothers, uh, you know, like manufactured that tent over a weekend and it's got one pick point at the top. So every time I'd be down in Albuquerque dressing the, uh, the Washington ballroom that I know the winds would be picking up and I'd be like, please God. Please God <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, it's, you know, every, I don't even remember how many miles of cable for all the, like the telegraph poles they did. It was incredible. You know, you had, I had basically teams working in each location and you'd literally have to drive to each location within that set. So, um, and, and the most incredible thing was um, the piece at the top when he's standing by the bomb. Yeah. I was standing in that piece, sort of dressing in cables and bits and placing lights. And there was a moment that I was in there by myself. And it's, um, 
it was just, I mean, I think I just got chills because you, you, you know, you're so busy and you're dressing and dressing and dressing. And all of a sudden you're standing next to these things and you're just like, wow, like just took my breath away. That's, that's incredible. Organizing all the different people working in different places. What was that like for you? Uh, so luckily I, um, the lead man that was in place on that show, uh, Jason and I had worked together and I knew his crew. So it's always great. Cause you, you know, you really get this shorthand with people where, you know, you know what to expect, you know, who's good at what, who's, you know, so that really helped. That was part of the reasoning for me being able to jump in so quickly and, and willing to jump in so quickly. Uh, you know, it, it really just goes back to being this organized, um, and, uh, you know, helping out New York, helping kind of put the look together for that, um, finishing up New Mexico. And then really, you know, I had three buyers in LA that I was just constantly trying to feed information. So, um, you know, I, it's part of what I love about my job. I, I love running all those crews and, and, you know, being able to sort of go around and get all these things together. Um, but it was really helpful that I, I, Jason and I had worked together. Yeah. Can you tell me a bit about um, Louis Strauss's spaces, what those were like to create? I know a lot of those were in black and white, which we covered earlier, but what were those spaces like to create? Uh, you know, we, we did his house. We didn't, we didn't see a lot of the house that we did for him. Um, but again, it was just sort of getting across that he was this very wealthy person um, uh, working in the black and white. Um, you know, I, he's such an interesting character, you know, he just, uh, um, but again, because, you know, we weren't really in his office or his sort of, you know, ho homey space. We were just in a very sort of formal living room when we were in his house. Um, but I do really love how that little room came together when the, he's doing his, um, his, uh, uh, sorry, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, but you, you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Um, because again, it was just, we, you know, we, we shot those sequences in, uh, Santa Fe. So we are cheating Santa Fe for <laughs> Washington. So, uh, again, this is just the power for me of set decorating. You know, there's this whole thing going on right now from Hollywood set decorators and it says empty without us. And that is really just a perfect example of taking this, um, government building in Santa Fe and turning it into Washington. And, you know, I, I think, and I hope so, everybody else thinks, it's really believable when you watch the film. You don't know that you're not in Washington or wouldn't believe that you're not in Washington. So that for me is really the power of set decorating. Well, And that film was so fun because, um, you know, we talk about period, but that film ran from 1925 to 1963. Yeah. So of all the period films I've done, I am probably most proud of that because, you know, you're switching gears constantly, you know, there's a very different look from 1930 to 1950 to 1960. So uh, that was something that um, I really appreciated about that film. It was so wonderful to be able to do all those time periods and pick just the right pieces that really got across that you were in that in that year. I was going to ask something similar with like such a such a long amount of time and then switching from different points in time and there's so many similar little women there's so many spaces that I could point out but do you have any favorite spaces or favorite ones that stick out to you that you really enjoyed working on? Um, you know you do a giant space like Trinity but then you know um, Jean Tatlock's bedroom um, you know, it's such an intimate scene and it's part of what I love about that film. You know, they're using this IMAX camera, but then Hoyta is using it in this very intimate way. You know, he's right in these actors' faces with this um, IMAX camera. So it was such an intimate scene, but it was so important to have this sort of beautiful textured, you know, it comes down to something as simple as a, as a bed cloth, you know? So for me, it was like, what's behind their heads and, um, you know, again, telling a story, uh, it could be as something as simple as that, or, you know, doing something as vast and huge as Trinity. So it just, you know, it's part of what I love about so much about my job is, is, 
creating, you know, all these different spaces and again, becoming sort of, um, you know, very, very educated, very quickly about all kinds of different things. Obviously I knew who Oppenheimer was, yeah. but I didn't know, you know, what kind of equipment he was using to, to make that bomb. So it was, um, it was a, a fast and furious education. You talked a little bit about what it was like, but what was it like working with Christopher Nolan? I absolutely loved working with Christopher Nolan. Um, you know, he he is such an incredible filmmaker, but it is again, it's so great to see um every day there is it's like clockwork. You know ex exactly what you're shooting. He shoots to the minute. Um, there's such a plan, you know, you, you, you know, when you walk on set, you can just tell that there's already such a plan, um, uh, of what, how the film's going to unfold. Um, it's, uh, and it's just such a, you know, such a treat to watch somebody like that direct. Um, you know, I, I, he deserves all the accolades because I really, I feel like this was, um, you know, a subject that most people probably didn't find that interesting. And I think the other thing that I uh, speaks volumes to me about it is I find that most people want to see the film more than once. Yeah. And I think it's just really a testament to uh, what he put into it and how he um, put it together. I know in an interview that you did with, with Ruth, um, there was something mentioned about having to run to the store last minute to change <laughs> everything. Do you, do you have any, <laughs> do you have any you know? memories like that? Or, or you could talk about that, that stick out to you from, from this crazy race of a project. Um, you know, that, that was kind of a, a one-off a situation, um, because we were very prepared for tea and yes. biscuits, uh, but then we were having a full course chicken, uh, lunch, uh, <laughs> But, you know, again, those are just happy, happy accidents. And sometimes, um, you know, it's any director's right to, to change his mind or feel like this is going to work better for the scene. Um, obviously, you try to be as well prepared as possible. But sometimes it is seven o'clock in the morning in Santa Fe and uh, there's one store open. So you make the best of it. Uh, but luckily, you know, I had already had teacups and napkins and some, you know, some stuff there. Um, so it was just sort of filling in the uh, the missing pieces. So, mm -hmm. Looking back on this film, what are you most proud of about it? Me personally, or the film overall, me personally, probably, um, you know, that I did jump in and, um, you know, uh, I'm so proud of, of what we did. You know, it was an incredible, irregardless of how, um, uh, regardless of how much prep I had, it was an incredibly fast uh, shooting sequence. So every day there was usually like two or three setups at least, um, you know, and we were moving from one location to another. So I'm just proud of how smoothly it went. You know, Chris never walked into a set and really changed a single thing. I mean, I think he asked me to take a tablecloth off of a table one time. Um, so that makes me really proud, you know, that I was able to sort of um, create these spaces in that time frame, and and they were happy with them. And when, I'm obviously elated how well the film's done and yes. how many people connected with it. So, yeah. Once again, congratulations on your nomination. Oh. Just once again. <laughs> Thank you. I am, uh, you know, I'm beyond grateful. I'm, you know, of course, thrilled. So, I think that's a perfect transition into some concluding questions for you here. Um, this is one of my favorite questions to ask. I ask it to everyone. And that is if you could give your past self a piece of advice, what would it be? Ooh, um, probably that's a tough one. You know, maybe to stop saying sorry all the time. <laughs> I don't know. Um, past light and past. Say it one more time. If you could give your past self a piece of advice, what would it be? Um. I don't know. <laughs> That's, I'm totally stumped. Um, just to, uh, you know, 
be strong and be confident in what you do. I, I think, you know, it's something I strive to every day. So. That's beautiful. Um, I don't know if you are working on anything or if there's anything you want to work on in the future, but is there any projects you want to mention while you're here at the end that you can tell us um, about? Well, you know, unfortunately last year was pretty tough because of all the strikes. Yes. Um, I did just finish a project for Netflix called The Perfect Couple with Nicole Kidman and um, Liev Schreiber was based on a book. Um, and that was, uh, you know, I got to go to Cape Cod, which I'd never been. And it was, you know, kind of a mess because of the strikes, but we we finished strong here in Los Angeles. Um, so that's uh, the last thing I worked on. And I'm actually uh, starting a show over at Warner Brothers in the next week or so. So happy, happy to get back at it. Yeah, because I, I got to tell you, I uh, I really, I love my job as much now as I did probably the first day I started it. And I really missed working last year. It was it was really hard because, you know, I think I really, um, you know, my my work is such a big part of me. It was it was hard to have that taken away and not have any control over it. So I'm really, really happy to be going back to work. It's perfect. Thank you so much for answering all my questions. It's you're so lovely and thank you and uh, good luck and uh, let me know how it turns out.